welcome to Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, this is Pixelated Twix. And I'm going to do a quick tutorial on Dragon Age Inquisition. I know a lot of people have already played this game, but I do have a good friend that is has ventured into this genre of RPG. Um, so it's a little overwhelming for her because there is a lot to RPGs like this. Um, so I decided that I would give her a hands-on uh, type tutorial. It's going to be kind of long, probably. Um, may not be of interest to a lot of people, and that's fine. Um, but I'm doing this specifically for her and another friend, uh, Miss Brick Gaming, who may or may not be playing this game. I don't know. We'll see. So, Jay, um, I'm going to specifically um, talk to you uh, for this tutorial. All right, so this obviously is a different RPG from something like Stardew Valley. Um, so I can see how people can get overwhelmed if they've never played a game like Dragon Age or even Skyrim. Skyrim and Dragon Age are two different RPGs, um, but they have a lot of similarities. So if you can get the basics down of Dragon Age, you'll have no issue with Skyrim. All right, so Let's just start with that. I, I marked my map with a little um, indicator here. This is with uh, right click. Basically what you can do is mark a waypoint of sorts uh, where you want to go on your map. So uh, say, where, where am I at? Where am I on the map? Um, this is where I'm at. You can see my cursor. This is where I'm at. I'm at this mage hideout. So say I want to go to this landmark here, and I want to be able to see this um, without looking at my map. So once I exit out my map, um, there will be a indicator in the sky. I may not be able to see it right away, but I can see it on my compass. See how that mark is on the compass? So without me having to keep referring to my map, I can make my way to my next destination. Also, uh, the closer you get to your destination, you'll see like a blue beam. Um, and that's from this little indicator that you marked or the little waypoint. All right, so going back to the map, you'll see all these different icons. And you can, if I zoom out, you'll see that this map is black mostly. This is just unrevealed portions of the map. As you explore, you'll open it up more. Um, but these icons have meanings. So these little tents are your camps. I remember I was referring to your camps yesterday. So your camps are where you can go to replenish your potions um, or in your health and things like that. It's also a, a way that you can fast travel around the map. So as you open up this map, you'll see more of these camps and it'll be just a quick way for you to get to certain areas of the map. You still may need to do some walking, of course, but that's what these are for. Um, so when you get to the, to the camp, your potions automatically replenish, at least your, um, at least this potion here, your healing potion. These, the regeneration potions do not, but let me show you. So you see, I have no potions right now. All right, so this was the first map that we opened up, or first camp that we opened up, because that was the where you landed when you uh, came to the hinterland. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it, left click, it'll, and then I can I can double click on it, cancel. I can double click on it like that, or I can click on it. Let's just click off this. I can click on it like that, and then hit travel, like there. Okay. So we're just gonna double click and click OK. This is, it'll say traveling. And it takes a minute. There's a lot of like loading screens in this game. That's the one thing that kind of annoys me about this game, but um, it is what it is. One day I'd like to play an RPG that just doesn't have a ton of loading screens. I think, I think there might be one that exists. Okay, so now you see that I have now eight out of eight potions, whereas before it was zero out of eight. This still, the regeneration potion, still is three out of five. That's because these you have to manually replenish. And let me show you how you do that. So I think this camp has a, yes, equip potions. So in order to equip potions, 
or restore some potions, other potions besides your healing potion, because that one's going to automatically replenish when you travel to a camp or when you travel back to Haven. Um, but to replenish the other potions and you get to unlock uh, three potion slots, um, you go to the equip po the potions table here where it says equip potions. You can hit F or you can click on it with your mouse. So right now, this potion, the regeneration potion, is the one I have. I've already played this game, so you won't have all of these potions unlocked. Uh, what you'll see are like um, the circles with locks. Basically, you'll have to discover those potions as you play. But because I've already played the game, these were already unlocked for me. Um, and I can show you how later if you want to, you know, see how you, well, that's just, we won't even worry about that. But so anyways, I have regeneration potion here. This, this other slot is still locked for me. And I'll be able to unlock this later on in the game. Um, but so what I need to do to replenish this is it says that I need over here. It says what I need to refill that potion. So regeneration potion requires one elf root. I have 40 um, that I have actually picked. So all I need to do is go right here and just left click on it and it'll automatically and it'll replenish for me. Um, if I wanted to, I could switch these out for like if I wanted the jar of bees, okay? I don't have what it takes to replenish the jar of bees. Um, same thing with rock armor. If I wanted to slot rock armor, that takes elf root. Mighty off offense tox uh, tonic. Uh, I don't think I can equip that at all. Okay. All right. So I can't equip this uh, potion. Why? Because I am not, I am a mage. And mages, this is for um, someone like Cassandra. Cassandra or, oh, okay. So Varric too. So non-magic users, I would assume that, um, I would assume that Solas can't use it. Yeah, Solas can't use it. So basically for uh, non-magic users, um, there might be, yeah, so an, another potion that Solas can't use is the Tears of Dead. So you'll see these in red. Uh, Varric could use Tears of, um, Tears of the Dead. Larian Potion is specifically for mages because it's for their mana. I don't use this, but some people do. But that's that's neither here nor there. You'll learn these as you go along. You'll pick them up and you can decide what you want what you want to use. I don't necessarily use them. I use basically my region potion, um, of course, the healing potion, that's automatically in there. And then I also use the healing mist. I use that because I like to have the extra healing, um, but I have been known to use the Jar of Bees. Usually I use Jar of Bees when I am getting ready to fight dragons because uh, they're very effective against dragons. Okay. And we will talk about that later. Okay, so basically that's it. Regeneration Potion. I have um, this one already, and this is the one I want to re re up so yeah um oh i can click on it again oh okay so solas has this um he has an option to have more um one more potion on his slot so that's another thing each character each of your um teammates or your um hmm, your companions have their own slots own he um potion slots Everyone shares the healing potions, so the whole party shares those eight potions. But on each character, they have you can put different things. So like Varric, you might want to put Tears of the Dead because he's a rogue. He's going to use poisons. He may use poisons. I like to use poisons on him, but sometimes, uh, especially early in the game or sometimes dragons i i just give him generate regeneration potion keep me from dying keeping the party from dying um uh just having that extra healing potion i like this now explanation the healing potion is an instant heal the regeneration potion is a heal over time what i mean by heal over time is that when your 
tunes, your your companions or yourself, when you take that potion, it's not you don't get health right away. It's um, over a few seconds, right? You'll get you'll regen health over um, a few seconds. Um, oh, it says restores twenty six health every two seconds for sixty seconds. Okay, so that's what that does, right? So um, Aries, she has. I don't know why. Oh, rock armor to uh, tonic. Let's take this out. Um, put this back in here because, no, I guess I did have five of these. I don't know why I thought. Anyways, um, Cassandra, right now I have uh, regeneration potions on her belt too. Okay. So uh, you have your yourself and your three companions. Later on in the game, you'll be able to switch companions in and out as you... Um, meet people and um, talk them into joining your crew. Uh, and you'll be able to decide um, at this little thing called change party, you'll be able to decide who you want to switch in and out of your party. Of course, you're always going to be in the party. So it'll be three other people that you can switch in and out. Right now, you just have Solas, Cassandra, and Varric. Um... Okay, so leveling up. Let's let's look at that. So every now and then, uh, your characters will level up as you progress, um, and you'll either hear uh, you'll hear when you level up um, because it'll be like this big indicator. You'll just know it'll. It, I can't explain what it sounds like, but you'll you'll hear it, um, and it might say it on the screen. I don't remember, but. Um, your companions will also level up with you. Not necessarily with you. They may level up on their own. Um, you may level up before them or they may level up before you, depending. But you'll see on their little icons right here, like this air flashing arrow. It'll be kind of faint, but it'll be like um, an arrow behind their picture, um, like a glowing arrow. And basically all you do... Um, is you can go, let's see, you can go to character record down here. Let me, let me go back. So it's these icons in the bottom right, you can just hit the one that has a, the head here, or you can do shortcut P. And I use P. So it, I'm already on Varric, so it brings up Varric first. So Varric is a rogue that uses crossbows. He's always going to use his crossbow because he has Bianca. So Bianca is his, um, is the name of his crossbow. He's very close to it. He's not going, you're not going to be able to switch out his weapon. So Bianca, um, being that is a crossbow, I tend to use bows um, his so he is has the ability you can no you can't switch him out you I wouldn't even worry about with Varric I wouldn't even worry about daggers with him I noticed that your main character was a rogue that uses daggers um, we can go over that too but for Varric Varric um, I would just go with archery specifically um, and you could pick up something from Sabotage. I do like to use Sabotage on Varric. I like to use these um, poison weapons. Um, and then I may head down to Fighting Dirty to Explosive Toxins or anything like that. Right now, he doesn't have any points to spend. But I do kind of go in here a little bit. And then sometimes I will go in here. Not much. Most of the time for Varric, I stay in Archery and Sabotage. Pretty much. Those are the two that I use for Varric. Um, so then over here in this top right hand corner, you can click the arrow to switch back and forth between the different characters. So Cassandra and she's right here. She's a level four warrior. So Cassandra right now is my tank because she's the only warrior that I have. So I tend to go with Vanguard, which um, this um, kind of gives her, I like to give her extra guard. That's what this is here. Um, and it'll tell you like what it is. Like over here, when you switch back and forth, you'll see what it is. Um, this is guard. This basically gives her an extra, um, extra protection. Like if you, let me back out real quick. Um, let me click on her. So 
Sometimes when we fight, you'll see like these extra, like the, it looks like metal going across above her health bar. That's guard. That's what this is. Um, when I say it's called War Cry is the name of the, the um, ability. Let me go back into the screen. So click over here. OK, so War Cry is what went is what uses what she uses to give herself extra guard. Eventually, you can add on. Um, you can you can increase the ability to this one spell by everyone having been able to have guard. So, um, let me see. Is it this one? You taunt. Okay, let me get, maybe not. It might be. One of these, let's see equipment. One of these is you can, the whole party gets guard. But it may be this one. No. It might be an extra ability that she, I don't know. I thought that one of these allows the whole party to have guard, but I, I guess I'm wrong. All right, so um, then I tend to go use Vanguard for her. And I also use, okay, so, okay, yeah, Vanguard and I use Weapon and Shield because she has a sword and board, which we call it, basically a sword and a shield. I use Weapon and Shield and Vanguard for Cassandra early in the game, okay? I don't want to give any spoilers, but... When you get further into the game, um, you may have further questions, but um, this is not, these won't be the only abilities that you can choose from, or only uh, talent trees you can choose from. Eventually, you'll be able to specialize. What I mean by that is Cassandra has her own specific specialization. These are very basic, right? This is what you start off with, but later on, even your character as a rogue will be able to specialize different into a whole different thing. It's it's a whole different game at that point. All right. So Solas, he's a mage. Solas, as right now as a mage, I like to use barrier, and and I like to pick up um, uh, energetic defense, and then I like to come down here and get dispel. Dispel is very useful for mages because. Um, there are other mages that will cast like runes on the ground. And if your party steps in them and those runes go off, they take a lot of damage. Sometimes they get one shot. So Dispel will um, remove those runes and also remove any protection spells that another mage might have. Um, and Solas or any mage in your party will automatically use it uh, when it's off cooldown or whatever. Also, I like to use Revival because Revival is your way of mages um, being able to uh, resurrect peop uh, people, dead party members. But if your party members die, you can actually revive them individually. You can go and um, pick them up. Like if, if uh, say, your character dies in a battle... You can click on Cassandra or Varric or Solas and run over to uh, your body and you should be able to like click on your body and you'll have to click and hold and they can um, res you. OK, so there's that, too. All right. So um, let's talk about herbs. So in the game, um, I hit V. This is what I'm doing. I'm hitting V, if you're wondering. V kind of um, is like a search button. So if there's anything that's lootable or you can re interact with it, it'll highlight it, right? So that's what this is for. Um, you can search for herbs in nearby. So um, you'll hear it ding. And it's dinging now because there's something that you can interact with that's nearby. But if there's nothing nearby that you can interact with, it'll just um, you'll just hear it go off like that. But there are um, herbs and there's um, metals that you can farm in the game. Herbs and metals are very important as well as cloth. Cloth, you generally get cloth and leather, you get off of killing animals. But um, when you hit V, there's an herb, it'll highlight the herb. It'll, yeah, see, 
see these herbs here after I hit V it highlighted it so you need these um, so I'm gonna click on these the L fruit is what you use to um, what we were using to make those potions or replenish the potions so okay so we got all of them over here let's we can keep going and oh see there's another one here so I use that a lot while I'm exploring is oh there's another one there's another something oh no maybe not okay so while I'm exploring or trying to get to my destiny war any longer it's a free for all mages against templars against everyone okay so there's a lot of um, party banter and stuff like that which is something that um, Dragon Age is known for and it's generally really good so Keep uh, your ears open for that. Okay, so you can see that a uh, couple things lit up on the map here. You can see it on the map. I'm sorry, I should tell you that. When you hit V, you can actually look and see where it is on the map, um, and it'll be nearby you. So over here, there's some elf fruit. And then over here, if I hit my V again, it's actually pinging the, um, the sign. You can't really interact with a sign, but it's you can the sign will help you tell you where you're at, where to go to get to places. So this is Red Cliff Village this way, and then Callan's Callan has foothold this way. All right. So if I keep going around here, um, it's picking up. What is it picking up? Some stone. And there's a treasure. Oh, there's a treasure. How did I miss that? There's a lootable treasure box back here. Take all, um, and then there's some iron, so we can loot that. Okay, so that's what the V is for, um, to help you locate like treasures, um, metals, and um, let's see, there's some more right here. Okay, so there's that. All right, so what we're going to do. I'm gonna save this really quick. Um, yeah, save it here. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my map. I'm gonna tell you what certain things are. So, again, these little tents mean camps, so they're all over, they're scattered all over. Um, this is a major city, Red Cliff. Uh, this is uh, that first uh, town that you helped clear out, uh, crawl the crossroads, and that's a merchant icon. The X just means, um, I forget what that means. I think that's a, a, like a, a poem or something, or you claim something. These are landmarks that you can claim, so I think that's what this was. Yeah, you claimed a landmark, that's what the X is. So if you claim these landmarks, you'll see an X there later. Um, these are quests. You can click on these. And if you exit out, it'll have the quests where you can go to, you know. I think this is these are all one quest anyway. You have to do, let me see, what, what is this? What is this quest? In the elements. Okay, so apostate caches. So this tells you on the map where all the apostate caches are that I have to get, okay? And then I can click on another one and it'll switch to that. And these are all the same quests, hunger pain. So I have to kill some rams for meat. And this basically tell kind of, rams are everywhere. So this one kind of doesn't count, but um, anyways. So yeah, this is like where all your quest indicators are. And then these are uh, rifts. These little things right here tells you on the map where those are. This is a cave. And yeah, this map is fairly large. So just a quick tip. I personally do not like to stay in the hinterlands forever. Um, you can go back and finish things. Now there is a main quest line in the hinterlands that you definitely want to finish. Uh, you'll end up having to go back to the hinterlands. Hinterlands is so big though, I like to kind of um, chop it up a little bit, like do some of the hinterlands and maybe go open up another uh, map on the table so let me let or area on the table so let me show you how to do that so we're gonna go to the world map from so we're gonna go here and hit map go to world map um, and then you can 
go back to Haven at this point. Haven is where every your base right now, right? So the hinterlands is where you're out questing at this moment. Your character's out questing. Haven is where every you know um, Cassandra. You saw Cassandra. You saw um, mm, oh, I forget their names. Um, but you can go back here and then you can hit travel, right? You can just click on it and hit travel to travel back to Haven. You don't have to stay in the hinterlands constantly or, you know, you can go back to Haven if you want to, um, say, make some armor. Okay. Or you can go back to Haven if you... I don't know if you want to go back and talk to your companions. So that's another thing that's important. And we'll talk about that um, as soon as I show you, um, Adon or Don, because you, I, I was telling you about Adon yesterday, the potion maker, and I wanted you to be able to see it, um, see him to know what I'm talking about. Explore everything as much as you possibly can because you're new to the game. You're going to miss a lot. Because I've played this multiple times, um, I still don't know everything about this game, right? So Haven is a fairly large little um, area in itself. Um, so explore this area. You're going to find some things. Um, I'm not going to tell you what. But all right. So down here is where you, when you travel back to Haven, this is where you're going to end up outside the gates of uh, the compound, right? So um, out here is there's an armorer guy named Herod. You can uh, make armor. You can upgrade, modify your armor. Uh, there's a little quest that he has you do, uh, kind of a tutorial kind of thing. Um, this is where you can craft armor. This right here is where you can buy these necklaces to respect, you know, like cleanse your skills. And you can... Um, you can change your um, talents around. I don't use this right away. I wait till later in the game. But if you made a mistake and you want to respect this one, the first one is a um, is a, a coin, just one coin. Obviously, the ones after this are 345 coins, so it can get expensive. And if I remember correctly, it's a single use for one person. So oh, is it for the party? No, it's for one person. So if you wanted to um, do it for everybody in the party, you'd have to buy one for every person. And then you all you would do is slot this into their um, their necklace slot. I'll show you. So right here, you would just put it right here. And what I did, I hit I to go into inventory. So while we're here, while we're at the weaponry and armor, I should explain how you um, change this. You did this yesterday. So um, you can change your characters and your companions gear. So um, that's the one cool thing that I, I really like about RPGs like this. You can um, change their gear. You can basically play your tunes, play your companions the way you want. Cassandra doesn't necessarily have to be a tank. I use her as a tank right now. I have used her as just a plain warrior, you know, just DPS. What I mean by DPS is damage per second. She's, you know, like Varric would just be a fighter amongst the rest of the crew. I have used her as that. Um, but yeah, you can change everybody's gear and weapons. Remember, you cannot change Varric's. Varric's weapon, Bianca, is as she is. Yet you can upgrade her. Uh, you can upgrade Bianca. Um, so what I mean by that is when I, when I click or highlight over Bianca, you can see like these little um, empty slots here. The empty am, uh, aiming, empty grip, empty arms. Those things you can. Um, upgrade and uh, you'll see and this is the upgrades here so right now I don't have anything to upgrade but there are um, there are plenty of armor and weapons for everybody that you can upgrade um, you know you'll pick up things here and there right now we don't have a lot for anybody 
So these are all kind of grayed out. So these are empty slots and things like that. But you'll you'll have plenty of weapons and armor to choose from. Okay. So, yeah. Anyway, so there is that. You can, like I said, you can change your weapons and our accessories um, for everybody. The only weapon you can't change is Varix. You can just upgrade Bianca. I mean, and they have, Bianca has her own separate um, specific upgrades. Now, like I said, explore Haven as much as possible, okay? Now, um, on your map, as when you get to Haven, they have, Haven has its own separate um, icons. You'll see these little people here. These are people in your, your group, not necessarily in your party, because your party right now, well, there's nobody in your party right now except for you. Because when you come back to Haven, everybody goes on their own separate areas. You'll always find them in the same spot. But um, your party is when you go out to quest, you'll have yourself and three other people that you choose. That's your party, right? But your party members and your other um, Inquisition companions hang out here. And you can see on the map where they're at in um, in the area. So generally speaking, Josephine and Cullen, um, yeah, let's see, Josephine, Cullen, and Liliana tend to stay back, uh, back in Haven. Cassandra, Varric, Solas, and whoever else will, tr um, they have the opportunity to travel with you every now and then. Um, Cullen and, and Josephine and Liliana will leave. But um, yeah, so you can basically tell where they're at on the map. Also, this here, Special Shipments, um, that is part of a DLC. And since you have the um, Game of the Year edition, you every now and then, now there is a, a glitch in the, there's a glitch in the system. Uh, you come to this building here, because you'll see it on your, your little compass down here that there is a, a special shipment. It may or may not be there, so don't worry. Sometimes it's just a glitch, but I would check every time. Like right now, there's nothing, right? But it's just, uh, it's a bug. But check to see if you didn't you got something, because there are actual things that you get. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, so after every main quest I finish, I go back and talk to my companions. Um, that's why I showed you their heads on the map. But you can see their heads on a compass, and you'll get to know where they're at. Um, but Varric always hangs out here. He, he tends to always hang out here um, in Haven. So you can talk to Varric, and you can just chuck it out with him. And this is um, how you um, build up relations with your companions. You can talking to them, how you, um, how you handle a quest how you talk to people, you'll see where it says Cassandra approves or Varric slightly disapproves or Varric uh, greatly approves. Okay, those are ways of how you build relationships, um, possibly romances with certain characters, depending. Um, uh, there's loop. How did I miss that? Okay. All right, so I'm just, I'm hitting V because sometimes you can just pick, I pick up missed treasures and things like that. Um, oh, I don't want to go this way. I don't want to go this way. I don't want to go this way. Okay, 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 okay. So, that's a quest. Um, but anyway, so you can talk to Varric back here. Solas hangs out back here. I think. Okay, yes, he did. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Solas is right here. So, you can talk to him. He's going to be standing out here. Um, but you can, I would try to find all your companions and talk to them after every single, it, you don't necessarily have to wait to after every single main quest line, but I, I talk to them constantly, right? So you build relationships with them. Now for Adan, this is where the potions master is. Uh, you'll see it right here, apothecary. Okay, so... Adan, this is, he will talk to you and he will give you a little quest. Um, he'll just say something like, oh, I wish I had such and such notes. Um, and that'll be in Haven. That You'll be able to find that in Haven. I think it's over here. 
No, I've already done that quest. Okay. But um, I, I don't know why I keep clicking the map like that. But that quest is right here in Haven. Like, you won't have to leave Haven to get that quest done. But Ad Adon is um, your apothecary. You can come to him to equip your potions if you want to. If you don't want, if you want to just travel back to Haven, you can equip your potions here. This table is for upgrading potions. And what I mean by that is um, it says here you can upgrade potions you already have unlocked. To upgrade a potion, select a category, select a potion, then select the upgrade. Potion upgrades require a significant amount of herbs to unlock. In return, they give permanent and significant bonuses to your potions. So let's just go to potions real quick. So healing potion is that is the one that red potion that we have on our bar. I'll go back. This one here, this is your healing potion. That's one of the ones you can upgrade. So the healing potion, you have two options. You can increase the healing or um, by 50 or you can increase the healing by 67. I think you have to unlock this one first. Now this will tell you what you need for increase the healing. I need 29 elf fruit, I have 34, and I need one dawn lotus, I have zero. So there are like uh, special herbs that you need to upgrade specific um, potions and things like that. Like this one needs a prophet's laurel and 34 embryum, which I don't have any of those, okay? Um, and then of course you can upgrade regen potion, lyrium potion. And then you have your tonics. I generally don't upgrade these because I don't use them, except for maybe the Tears of the Dead, which is the one I, I use for Varric. Actually, I use this for any melee. Melee is obviously the, like your melee, your character's melee, because you're you're right up on um, in the mobs. Like uh, when I say melee, you are physically hitting something, right, with your weapons. Whereas someone who's a caster would be a mage or um, like you in dragon in in D and D on uh, Dungeons and Dragons you are I think you're you're not a warlock that's that is um, Lisa so Lisa's a warlock she would be a caster you I think are a mage you would be a caster right sorcerers casters um, those are all casters necromancers casters okay which means they stand back away from the the fray and they fight from afar right and they cast spells also um archers are not casters but they're also not melee so um sorry that was crazy snoring um Varric is a um oh gosh i'm, I'm forgetting the term but he is a uh, distance. He fights from the distance. Sometimes he gets up close, which I hate, but that's just the AI for you. Okay. So, oh, you can also buy grenades. The healing mist is a grenade. The jar of bees is a grenade. These are things, a pitch grenade. That's actually, I think, good for um, dragons, too. Anyway. Um... So there's that. So you can upgrade potions here. Those tend to come a little bit later um, when you when you have enough herbs or you can spend a bunch of herbs on upgrading. So mostly right now I just focus on equipping my potions. I upgrade later. Um, and we, if we if we did be here, it would highlight the uh, tables and it would also highlight this letter. Okay, so I think, honestly, I think that's really it. So I don't want to go that way because I'm still playing. Obviously, I'm still playing this game. So um, I don't want to, like, go any further. But like I said, go back to Haven as often as you want. You don't have to, um, you don't have to rush through this game. Take your time. Um, this is one of the, RPGs are one of these things, one of those games where you take your time, enjoy the story. Um, make decisions, make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes because, and I, I wouldn't say mistakes, okay? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say mistakes because they put those things in the game for you to make choices, right? So every decision you make um, has some kind of cause and effect. Um, mostly in Dragon Age Inquisition, it's going to be like how um, people interact with you and things like that. And then... Um, Games like 
Origins, Dragon Age Origins, that's the, the first Dragon Age, that has more of an effect on, on your world, um, especially in the, expan- uh, the expansions, but I won't get into that. Anyway, so yeah, make choices um, by speaking to people. Um, talk to everybody that you possibly can. You can do that stuff off camera if you want. Um, honestly, I feel like this game would be um, perfect for you to just play on your own. Uh, so you have the concentration that you need to play the game. Because I just think it it needs that. Um, especially if this is the first RPG like this that you've played. This isn't also, this isn't exactly an open world RPG. When I say open world, I mean something that um, where the the whole map is available, right? Like if open world, if this were Skyrim, you would this would be the map, right? You would you would use this one specific map and you'd travel all over this map. But because this isn't exactly open world, you travel to different um, areas, different cities, and things like that, and it's different maps. Um, and it's not open world. You can't just walk to those different areas. You have to, like, uh, kind of travel there. But, yeah. Uh, all right. So I hope that answered a lot of your questions. Let me know if that was too much. If you need me to go over things again, take copious notes. Um, because I know that it can feel a little overwhelming. But I promise you, once you understand, once you get it, it'll be like second nature. It, it's really not as complicated as it seems but it does seem overwhelming to you of course because this is a different type of rpg that you're used to playing maybe i don't know maybe you've played a game like this before but um yeah that's it all right but um it once you get this any rpg basically you play um yeah there'll be some differences but the the basics will be the same um, like skill trees and switching weapons in and out and uh, things like that. Dragon Age just have its own um, game mechanics, but that's all RPGs. They have their own game mechanics, but they do have basics um, being the same. So that's it. Uh, I hope you got something out of it. Even uh, the people that have played Dragon Age Inquisition, I hope I, I wasn't too all over the place. I know that I was. I didn't really have any rhyme or reason, but I definitely just wanted to give Jay um, a tutorial specifically and then Miss Brick Gaming if she decides to actually play Dragon Age Inquisition that'd be great um, I will link the channels for Miss Brick Gaming and um, Jay Loves Gaming in the description box so you can go check them out for yourself um, and look out for Brit's maybe stream of Dragon Age Inquisition or maybe Let's Play probably stream I don't think she'll do an actual let's play, but that would be cool if she did. Mm-hmm. All right. So, yeah, I will talk to you later. Ciao.